Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week live, well, not live, a broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire. But today we are at Pork Fest 2014 in the Alarim Media Room. I am Ron Mathias. And I am Joel Valenzuela. And today we have a great guest. He is the prophet of Keen. <laughs> He's be upon, upon him. him. Uh, Ian Freeman. Hey, guys. Thanks you. for having me. Hey, always a pleasure. So, uh, Ian, uh, well, you wanted to ask questions yeah. first. first did. How many pork fests have you been to? I think this is number seven. Number seven. How many have there been? Eleven. Where well, were you for the other ones, the other four? I lived in Florida at the time. Like you guys, I moved up here without having gone to a pork fest. Well, there we go. So you just went full plunge. What was your first, first pork fest like? Was it a little bit, did you just come and like, whoa, absorb everything? Or did you just hit the ground running working? Well, I mean, I was working, but there wasn't as much uh, going on. LRN didn't exist at that time, so this setup wouldn't have been utilized by multiple shows. It would have just been free talk live uh, broadcasting. It was actually at a different campground uh, at the time when I started going. I think this one was in the Lakes region. Oh, wow. And it was, you know, it was good, but the, the problem was it was like a state campground, basically. And so that was kind of weird, yeah. going to Porkfest at a state campground. Eventually, they moved it back to Rogers. So apparently, originally, it was at Rogers. Then it went to this other place for a couple years, and then back to Rogers. Sort of like how the Manchester Bitcoin meetup moved from Strange Brew to Murphy's to back to Strange Brew and maybe back to Murphy's again. We'll see. How was the Bitcoin meetup this week? It was uh, at Porkfest. It, it was it like was disappointing. four people. Really? Yeah. It was like four. You know what? That's because it wasn't organized very well. I don't think it, mm. it wasn't in the uh, the uh, brochure, the you know the schedule or whatnot. It's just like an impromptu see. thing. Though I did make it sure that there was a uh, Bitcoin was discussed because I did buy Bitcoin at the Bitcoin meetup mm. at uh, that was here at six. Just to Sunday. say, it just was to a say Bitcoin that it happened. Up. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's only like five <laughs> or six of us. I mean, there's a couple of yeah. Bitcoin barons there, but. You That's know, the thing we what we got to say though, about spontaneous order. It's a beautiful thing, but it doesn't really exist unless you make it happen. You it's don't true. just wait for things to come out of him in air. It just means that you're able to make things happen, right? Yeah, you don't have. spontaneously have. You know, you don't just say, "I will spontaneously have a big pot of money fall in my right. lap because there's no government affecting me right now." No, you have to go out there and work. You got to hustle there. It you takes know? action. We need doers in New Hampshire. What was crazy? Speaking of action, like especially when it was raining last night, you see all these people, including Cecile over here. Selling stuff, or whatnot, selling ponchos for two bucks, making a huge profit, being so doing the agorism or whatnot. And I came here, I didn't buy any supplies. I bought like you know toothpaste, clothes, and you know brought mm -hmm. the best stuff. But I didn't bring any food. I didn't bring. Well, I brought some bananas, but that yeah, count. and banana crisps that yes, I ate. Yes, but at any rate, I didn't bring anything that like to survive for a week. And all I all I do is just go around spending Bitcoin, yeah. being able to buy any kind of supply or food that I need. And it's absolutely that's great. beautiful. <laughs> and so that's that's the thing. I've been using Bitcoin all week long with no problem, because despite sketchy little internet conditions, I have Verizon, and so I can. Except for yesterday during the storm, it was a little bit spotty. Mm -hmm. I could just use Bitcoin. And several times I had to pay pe pay for people's purchases and have them get back to me because I just I had connection they didn't. That's the biggest downfall is uh, the Wi-Fi here because I'm I'm still running T-Mobile and I can't use my phone half the time. I don't even have a signal, and half the time the Wi-Fi here has been spotty. That's my only gripe. They, I wish yeah. the I wish the it's uh, your first time here. It's yeah. so cute. This is the best year for internet ever at Pork Fest. Yeah, this is like amazing. I actually have Wi-Fi that is somewhat usable. Well, when, when my wallet, when I can't access my wallet, I don't even care about even being able to access, you know, like being able to look at Facebook or something, just being able to use my uh, my Bitcoin wallet. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a couple of times where he had to pay because I literally could not get oh, to bummer. Yeah. Yeah. That was just you. There's other people. Well, have you tried? The, I haven't tried it yet, but have you tried the Bitcoin Wi-Fi thing? It's great, not during lunchtime or dinner time. Also, if it's, you buy it in the off hours, it works great. It's in huh. Amanda Bolden's ice cream tent. So if you're buying ice cream from her, it's great. If you're buying from anyone else, <laughs> very clever move, huh? Very clever move. We'll be well, yeah. right there. But really, I don't really care too much about Bitcoin accessibility here at Porkfest because this Porkfest, it's all about the Dogecoin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doge is, that, is right? taking Doge over. Doge is taking Porkfest. over. How many it's people like, are taking Doge? I saw it at Thunder there, Doge. There is a... Um, there's a uh, Pancake, uh, was it making bacon? Uh, making bacon pancakes. Bacon pancakes. Mm. Yeah, and so they, not only fast. do they take Doge and Bitcoin, they take Litecoin and Darkcoin, and Crazy. they have and they have like the whole QR codes all set up and whatnot. 
it's incredible to see like multiple different digital currencies being t- taken at yeah. different shops. And just thrown out, just explaining the whole Dogecoin thing. It was an idea for Shire dude, Andrew Romilio. He's mm-hmm. th- he's trying to add like a comedic presence to the Shire. And so one thing he's doing is he's going around filming and trying to create a video that makes it seem like Dogecoin is the only currency at Porkfest. <laughs> and so and we're we, acting with it too. It's incredible. Exactly. And we're just that's that what could we're go doing. viral. We're providing him with footage and material for his act. And it's <laughs> he's been doing great. He's been doing the whole Dave Ridley type thing where he says part of a sentence while filming a random object. <laughs> and then the next thing, he's been doing that all around. I, he's like, I'm walking with him. He's like, hey, I was like, dude, I got to film this. You and know, Dave Ridley actually offers classes. You can pay him like 40 bucks and no. he'll spend four hours with you and no. train you how to do Ridley r- reports. So he, he was, I, <laughs> oh can my pay gosh. Him, I can pay him to spend four hours to teach me how to make a Dave Ridley report. Yeah. <laughs> is, he gonna, is, he, is it like a singing class where you got to like learn how to do the jingles? It's so fun, actually. Not I took that, it. I took it years anymore. ago. Not that he, he gives you assignments and you have to go out and do things. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, so you took a class. I'm actually kind of curious now. Yeah. Um, what assignments did you have to do in order to complete this class? Just little stuff like interviewing people and like basic kind of newsy, news gathering tasks. Okay. And uh, it, was, it was cool. I mean, like he's a pro. Dave Ridley, he was trained professionally and he worked for Fox News in, uh, in Boston prior to moving to New Hampshire. Did so, you have to use a 15-year-old camera for the class? I have been trying to get Dave to upgrade his camera. You I am, will not. I even wanted to give him an old camera and, you know, he hasn't done it. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the thing is I think it's a conscious decision on his part, his lack of quality in a lot of ways. <laughs> it, I don't know. He's a weird guy. But then again, who isn't? Right. Well, this is kind of why we're all here, right? Well, yeah, he's done so much for like getting people to move and like seeing what it's like here. But yeah, he needs a new camera. I'm tired of seeing it. It looks yeah. like he's filming from 15 years ago. I, I understand that's his if that's his artistic way of doing it. Mm. And that for him, I understand that because everything we do is kind of artistic as well. But if we I want to see it in ourselves. HD. If I have it on my, you know, yeah, I would love to uh, to get it's Dave not... Ridley an HD cam, yeah. Be a yeah, huge upgrade. Get him something on SD as well because I think he's still using DV tape. Yeah, so I know. Does he have to like record straight to the? You have to dub DV tape. Yeah. Oh my god, how much time <laughs> is he spending doing that? I don't know. I guess being being a Ridley is a full time job. It is, it is, and he has made it work. You know, like he uh, that's what he does now, well, which is cool. We thankfully do something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, I think, pulling in advertising dollars. Are you guys doing that? No, oh, not yet. <laughs> right. We want to advertise <laughs> this at this you know? com. Although I did just do a plug for notfatanymore.com. So if you all are listening to this, please kick us back some money. Yeah, but we definitely need to get on the marketing standpoint of that. We need T-shirts, like the Rebel T-shirt. I, I'm, I'm upset hey, check with that Rebel. I, I am I totally the wore this with you in I, mind I, today. I, thank you, I appreciate that. I almost yeah. want to go up to uh, Davi and just like, can you put like a love logo right here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, here's Shire dude. He just came into the building. He's late. He slept too late. We're calling you out on air. Whatever. He's still cool. Yeah. You. Hey, can you pick up that camera right there? Thank you, sir, because you owe me one. Yeah, yeah. Just get us some good footage here. Yeah, at any rate. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I want to know is, um, do you ever have a fear, a deep-seated fear, that Keen one day won't be weird anymore? No. Is it weird <laughs> now? Is Keen weird? I don't know, man. I, yeah, kind of. So, what's weird about Keen? Yeah, what is weird? What well, I'd, it'd, it'd be a quicker question, a quicker uh, way to say it would be what's not weird about Keen. What's not weird about Keen is it has a similar architectural style to the rest of New Hampshire. It ca- has kind of a New Vermont vibe going on there. There's like actual normal businesses that accept FRNs and stuff like that. There's a few normal things about Keen, mm-hmm. and I very much appreciate that. But then there's people with um, about a three three foot radius hairstyles walking around filming. Government employees. You, you always gotta. Are you go jealous after, of? You uh, always gotta go after Garrett dude, Taird. No, what, what, dude, dude that's that? just like. I hear jealousy. <laughs> no, me too. Yeah. Look, every, I, uh, it, it must be hard. I mean, everybody loves Garrett's hair. He gets compliments on it constantly. Yeah, there's some high school kids that are gonna razz him about it, but besides that, yeah, well, it's very it's, popular. I, let me put it this way: he wouldn't be the same man he is today without it. His hair makes the man. Right, <laughs> and, but it's like well, there's every, it's, it's Keen is honestly no, 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 no. like uh, real talk for a second. Keen has a different vibe that you won't find anywhere else on planet Earth, 
And I think that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I think it's cool. And it's, it's a like, unique place. One thing that I, I've noticed is that everyone in this community has like this, their own interesting style. Mm. Like everyone has a style of the way they dress, the way they look, um, how they film or whatnot. Everyone has like this own unique style that they put. Like a lot, everything that we do, I, I do anyways, I try to put like my own artistic way of how I want it to look and how I want to appear on camera and whatnot. I'm sure Garrett, he has his, he has his um, brand. Like yeah. he is a brand of what he looks like. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of other people in this community, like people that uh, do similar stuff, they have a brand. Like Dave really has a brand. Like he, he, <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Like everyone, you have a brand. Like way, way you go about it. Like everyone has their own brand. And yeah, Daryl W. Like, Perry look. definitely has a brand. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a fascinating As in creative thing to see in the community. Well, it's great. I mean, that's that's what we need. We need diversity in approaches and tactics, so we can reach more people more effectively. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Now, a lot of people have been talking lately about why manchester because manchester is a real boom town right now with the porcupine community well, why not manchester and, it's a yeah. populated well, area there's lots yeah. of opportunity and it seems like and one thing that for all the loving barbs i throw here and there to keen without keen there wouldn't really be the free state the way it is today and i am eternally grateful for that Me too how and what was it like do you ever Coming feel do you nothing. ever feel like it's like do you ever what do you feel about the shift the shift. Like it used to be everyone was moving to Keene. And no, that, that's not true. Well, at least <laughs> that's used to never be been true. They used to, well, it, where was everyone moving back in the day? All when? over the place. People have been moving all over New Hampshire since day one of the Free State Project beginning mm -hmm. the, the migration. It's just that Keene is louder than anywhere else and more noticeable because we've been blogging what's been happening. Been and so therefore there's a, there's a misperception that Keene is the well, like key well, destination. Exactly. Like outside of New Hampshire, everyone thinks is the free state project like, <laughs> there's only a few so dozen people, people i got there. so many people know, right? messaging me when i when i said i was gonna move like oh you got a job in Keene. you're going to Keene. um and like, like a lot of them don't even realize that there's a lot of other people living around the state but yeah. my question is isn't why Keene like you... part of vermont anyway no not quite <laughs> <laughs> that's the old running joke why is it that you know i i think we're making uh, a difference in regards to talking about what's going on uh outside of Keene. but why is it there's not that many people doing what we do or talking about what's going on other in other parts of the state besides Keene and I guess us now in Manchester. Well, Garrett, of course, uh, started freeconquer.org Free and ultimately ended up moving to Keene uh, to manage the Keene Activist Center. And of course, you know, I'd had him on Free Keene before that, before his move. Um, so, you know, he's an example, but he's also a native. So I guess maybe that, maybe that doesn't count in the same way as far as like free staters. I'd always hoped that there would be more regional kind of newsy blog sites, but it never really panned out. So yeah. your, your, your well, guess is as good as mine. I mean, and to be honest, Concord's kind of Manchester Metro, you know? Yeah. It's so... Sort of. Uh, Manchester, there's, there's been some more good stuff coming out of Manchester, like, again... This well, right, thanks to you guys. This right We're here. To. Well, thanks, to Shire dudes. He, he's we got making it happen. Guy on board, so we got, okay. we got we got a third cool. guy coming in. Yeah, and, and then uh, like Area Twenty Three, that whole thing was a whole a huge boon to Manchester and the whole community. And I hear they're starting it back up again. So I hear. Well, you know, if you so. build it, they will come, right? Exactly. exactly. There needs to be more of those kind of clubhouses all around uh, the state. You know, I would love to be able to go to like different cities all around. Uh, New Hampshire, and be able to go and just hang out with a lot of free staters and like a free stater, you know, totally uh, buildings and whatnot. Yeah. There needs to be more people with uh, capital yes. here and the willingness to oh, some risk of, it. Some of those, bi some of those Bitcoin barons need to. Drop some of those some. Bitcoin darons. <laughs> 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 well, that's the thing is the the free coast vibe is definitely a much more polished and affluential and entrepreneurial type vibe, mm -hmm. and they're so quiet. But here's the thing, I. I, uh, one, at some point, I want to go to the coast and I want to make it loud. And here's the thing: hmm. that Portsmouth would be a great spot for that. Yeah, that, it's a when the free coasters start being loud. That's when you know it's happening. Whatever it's happening, it's not. Okay. It's not. You know how things move in waves. It's not the the isolated hippie college town. It's not. It's not just that big metro center where just, there's a lot of people. So of course things happen. It's like it's the tourist spot, right? Tourists go in and out of, of Ports, the Portsmouth area all over the place. It's really walkable. It's really left state is dominated. It hmm. just it's the perfect place. Once once we start showing up there, then it's like holy crap, 
this is something to pay attention to. All right, I'll look forward to seeing the video. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, speaking <laughs> of which, and this might you know why not want to ask you on air, right? Uh, I'm about to propose marriage. No, just kidding. Uh, July fourth, we're doing a New Hampshire Independence uh, rally sure. slash the foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Yep. Yeah, we're doing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. U.S. out of NH, and we're trying to do it across the state. We're trying to spread our forces and have it in. Yeah. I would. I, yeah, my vision we, for it is have something going on in Manchester, Keene, and Portsmouth at the same time. I'm down. Film Let's that. do it. Can yeah. you help? You, you, if you, you can, help film that if you can some, take care of the Keene part of that. I'm not going to film it. I'm going to hand out flyers. Well, okay, if you, you have some Garrett footage. or someone there okay. filming. If you can just have that happening in Keene and have it filmed, that's like the big part because mm -hmm. it's not so much what like we do, it's what the, the world thinks we are doing. Mm -hmm. And then we can do Manchester and we'll get something going with the coast. If we can just do that July 4th, make a big splash, bring some porcupines in, Show the love of a liberated world. Yeah, so the foundation for New Hampshire Independence. Have you had anyone on from that no, group? No, I have not. Uh, it, for listeners or viewers who don't know, that is a group founded by Free State Project participants, maybe a New Hampshire native. I'm not real sure who all was on the, the founding board there, but to promote the idea of New Hampshire independence yeah. or secession. Yeah, it all blends together at some point because whether it's friendly natives or free staters or pre-staters or free state friendly movers who aren't part it's like we're all part of the yeah. one big happy most people i don't even know i mean a lot of people I, I i don't know them well enough to know if they were here from originally from new hampshire or not it's that's just a question you can ask in a polite conversation basically yeah it's yeah. just it's an interesting interesting well, vibe how it all comes to the same but then like uh we have a friend nate who does a, a bitcoin painting business out of Bitcoin Manchester. painting. He is, he's like yeah, a professional agorist. outdoor painter. He's an agorist. Okay. Painting. And he's just like the most like local as he comes. Blue, he's like a, just such a blue collar, worked with his hands, like local, who's mm. lived all around the state. And he's just, he's just such a normal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Such a normal, but then he's, he's part of the community because he shows up. He's here at Pork Fest, right? He's going around. He's, and it's, uh, it's really nice to see that, that whole mesh. You Especially, know. like, the dynamics of, like, the community in general. Like, being here, you know, it, usually, like, an age issue is a big deal or um, ethnicity or whatnot. You know, people go and, you know, categorize themselves in groups because that's kind of how you were, you mm -hmm. know, you went through all your public schooling and you're in that one group of people for, like, the whole time. So you got that group mentality. Yep. But being here, everyone's here for the same reason because they want to be free. So, like, you can go around with different people whether or not, like, case in point, um, Friday night, we cop blocked a DUI checkpoint in yep. Manchester. And Emily Sandblade, who is a self proclaimed anarchist state rep, is out there. I mean, you know, she's in her 70s, something like that. She's pretty yeah, old. She's getting pretty there. Old. She's out there with an LED sign saying, you know, turn now, police ahead, or whatnot, it. with all, like, our, you know, all of us, you know, youngins, or what, you know. But it's like, I don't view her as you know someone in her 70s i view her as another human being and she Absolutely. views yeah. us as another she's human got a lot being. of energy and yeah. as well and well, yeah so. that's the thing. i've traveled around the world a whole lot i've been in a lot of different groups and stuff and i i always got along great with people of all different age groups but there's always been a certain different dynamic like when i'm with really young people or like children or young teens i have this sort of mentor feeling to them and when i'm talking to old, to old people it's like they sort of have this mentor feeling here that just doesn't even exist here hmm. over here it's like young old any age it's like it's so weird that there's no there's no difference it's we're all equal here and it's no one decided that it just spontaneously happened i think that's a, like a beautiful thing and absolutely I, yeah. and start tearing and up right now it's also nice because you know somebody like an emily sandblade has an ability to get elected to public office without even a second thought by people because she fits that kind of elderly office running sort of mold yeah. and another example is kathleen converse another middle-aged lady who was uh on the jury that set doug daryl free i don't know if you're familiar with that case but no. it was from i think about a year ago uh she got on a jury and because she you know she looks like kind of a grandmotherly type not quite you know middle-aged but uh she she fits that kind of juror role and she got on there and she flipped this jury to not guilty on a marijuana growing case it was the first real serious yeah. instance of jury nullification here in new hampshire yeah and speaking of jury nullification i mean uh thanks for doing all that you do with that and we're happy to be part of that i brought yeah. some new flyers yes. by the way if oh, you want to thank you yes. we, yeah, we rock it I'm, our uh, our studio is becoming like a uh it is literally becoming 
like a propaganda set. Yeah, <laughs> it's the man's cack. I keep like, yeah, it's becoming the, the man's cack where I keep getting oh, more cool. and more stuff to do and whatnot. Like we're building up our supplies. Right on. Yeah. So we're talking about all this wonderful stuff about the community, how things are different here and how it's just so cool. And we can live in this, this world. It's like, you know, we're all Peter Pan up in here. We never have to grow up. It's like everything's great. But what, and out in Keene especially, you know, you got your show going. You got freekeen.com. And I'm not going to say that in Ridley voice. I've done enough of that already. <laughs> and all these other things, you got your circle of friends. Everything is great. But here, here we go personal. Right? We're, we're, let's go deep. Where do we, what would, what would you be if you got transplanted out of that whole thing? Like say you just woke up in Belgium, say. I just picked that at random. And you had to like get a normal job to feed yourself and there's like no liberty you, community around you. Or like what, <laughs> what would you as a per- person on a very personal level like, how would that be for you to, like, what would it be? Would it just would be a huge culture shock? Is the, just... is the question, like, uh, that, you know, I would remember everything else that I had done, and I just showed up in this new place and yeah. start from scratch? Yeah, I'm and saying... you never come back to this. I'm saying, would you just, like, how hard, one thing, how hard would that be on you personally? But also, like, would you just shrug and, like, start building it back up again where you are? I mean, what? I tend to be a pretty positive uh, person, and I don't think that I would really let it get to me. It would be a challenge, obviously, and you know, you'd be in a new place. You wouldn't know how to speak whatever the main language would be, and um, you know, there'd, be a lot of, there'd be a learning curve, but you'd have a lot more time on your hands. I mean, I would, all my responsibilities would be washed away as well, so I could focus yeah. on whatever I needed to. How many hours a week do you spend doing this? This meaning your activism, activism and w- yo thing. I, I mean, I, yeah, your thing. Like, uh, you know, whether it's radio, activism, whatever, pimping LRN. That's hard to really calculate. I mean, because I can pour as much time in as I want to. And I usually want to pour a lot of time in because, you know, it's my business is also activism. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I do free talk I think live. The correct answer of how many hours is. All of them. <laughs> Pretty much, you know, when I'm awake, um, my only real vice is Facebook at this point. Like, I spend, I feel like I spend way too much time there. So but it's an activist tool, isn't yeah. it? I know. Every yeah. time I, I'm on Facebook feeling bad about how awful Facebook is as far as a time sink, then I'll find something really valuable, like, oh, there's a cool event. I needed to know about that. Well, I mean, this community lives and dies on Facebook. Unfortunately. Like, you have to be on Facebook. And like I use it as a networking tool. I do, uh, totally as yeah. well. But I also can catch myself doing things that are not networking, yeah, true, true. just scrolling down the news feed incessantly. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> well, honestly, uh, it was Facebook that sort of brought me here. Was it? I was same here. I, ch- you know, I heard about the Free State Project. I started looking into things. I got connected with some groups, specifically the Free Coaster group. And then I just was watching. I was just living everyone's lives vicariously for yeah. about a good six months. Hmm. And I have to say a big shout out to Vanessa Vine because it was her Instagram that triggered my move. No kidding. Because wow. just seeing all those gorgeous pictures of, uh, the, of Portsmouth and stuff. And that hmm. just really made me like, I, I, I want to be here. And I'm, she's working overtime here. Uh, Borkvest doing the same thing. She has some couple... Really cool, candid puppy shots. Yeah, and I did a uh, talk at Alda Expo on Tuesday about kind of similar thing where more people in the community need to just post what their life is like here. Like take mm-hmm. photos of what they're doing, talk about going to a meetup or whatnot. Their and beer they bought in Bitcoin. Everyone. Like, you know, I've been going around if I ever meet someone that's, you know, the first time at Porkfest and they've never been in New Hampshire or interested. I'm like, look, all you got to do is go to a bunch of Facebook uh, f- uh, free stater groups and friend as many people as you can. Some of them will accept it and make friends from them, make connections and follow what their lives are like. And hopefully they post more pictures and tell, tell, them, tell the story of this unique lifestyle that we're all living. Because this is very unique. This is a very, very unique lifestyle. And uh, I did the same thing. I was um, following many different people within the community before I got here. Mm-hmm. especially Because when, when, when he moved, he stopped at my place first. So then I'm like, I really have to follow his journey. Because like, he just left my you know, apartment. He's going there. So like, i got to follow this. What's going on? And just I, seeing... I think, I think he, he fell in love because I left him some... Um, Mexican sugar roasted coffee. Oh, that was good coffee. And I, he, we're, we're when, out. When, you, when are you going to get the hookup on that? I'm going to Arizona in like August or so. You and I'm going to returning it. hero, talking to everyone about how awesome it is in Shire. Yeah. Hopefully I'll bring some people with me. But at the very least, I'm going to get my fucking coffee hookup. <laughs> and do you like coffee? <laughs> it's Ian? really good coffee. You know, I'm fine with coffee. I don't really spend time drinking it, though. You don't spend time, so you just do like shots. 
<laughs> there we go. You're gone. <laughs> That's not a lot of time. No, was, but you're right. We need more storytellers. I mean, yeah. we, know, we need more people to, to, if not tell their own story, someone else tell their story. And, uh, and they need to be in more places, which is why I've tried to bring as many people in from like Manchester at Free Keen just to give an outlet for some of those stories. And we can only tell a fraction of them, but uh, well, I hey, think that anytime, people find that very interesting. Anytime you want me on Free Talk Live, then I'm not working. I'll show up. Okay, show you cool. some love. I appreciate that. And so, also, one thing I'm doing on a specific... Again, this is, this is where we, we all whore ourselves out with our own little uh, particular projects. Um, I do a lot of stuff for uh, the Desert Links, my mm-hmm. YouTube channel. I try to make short, condensed, like more artistically appealing uh, storytelling videos about the community. And so, like, I've done one about uh, Rich Paul's life, the five-and-a-half-minute yep, one. saw that one. I've done the one about when... Uh, Rob bought the car from Daryl Perry with, a, with Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. I did one about the Agris cab. I'm going to do one about the Shire Co-op as soon as I get back. And I'm sure a million out of the Pork Fest, right? That's why we come. And we have like months of work ahead of us yeah, just from so this week. I have so much footage going around like, oh, yeah, so, at events and like yeah. capturing like moments that you, would, you wouldn't keep. I caught this great moment yesterday when it was pouring down rain. All right, and I kind of want to just capture like the essence of just being at Porkfest, like not just going to a show like this or you know a presentation or something, but like what it's like just like hanging out with a bunch of people that love liberty. And uh, we're at the Satoshi Saloon over here, uh, Carl and Shem's tent. Wonderful they're, people. Like, they're amazing activists. Oh yeah, yeah. They're and wonderful uh, people. anyways, uh, Joel and Shem are playing. Uh, you're playing your ukulele. Yeah, he's playing guitar. And all of a sudden, uh, Lauren Rumpler walks in, and they just, it was like this magical like, jam. They just started playing. She started singing. And it was like, <laughs> it felt like it was, I, I was intoxicated. Spontaneous as well, order. But hey. It was just like spontaneous yeah, order of totally. like this, beauty, this beautiful like music just being played for a few minutes. And I caught it on film, and it was, it was so beautiful. So cool. Yeah. And I yeah. hope, I, I, I want, I'm trying to capture like moments of what it's like just living. Hashtag, here. it's like this too. Yeah. Which is it? <laughs> Hashtag, I, I overuse, I'll admit. I abuse it a little bit. I just beat that and wake it up and beat it some more. Again, sorry for the violent metaphors here. But if more people got on board with that, that whole hashtag thing, we get a lot, a lot easier of a lifestyle sort of mesh of posts mm-hmm. about the state. And that could be, that could, that could be a thing, to quote Amanda Billy Rock. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Let's do it. So what's your uh, day-to-day, uh, besides doing uh, LRN stuff, what, what, what's your pork fest like, your normal routine? What are you, what are you doing? At I, pork fest. Yeah, because I have, I have a very set routine that I've been yeah, doing. Yeah. But I'm kind of curious uh, what you've been us. doing. <laughs> well, it's different this year. Um, I mean, I kind of have to schedule myself around the studio and what's going on here, especially in the first couple days to kind of uh, take the train wheel, training wheels off of the hosts here and get them familiar with the uh, equipment. Mm-hmm. So like first, the first two days, I was up by 9 a.m. to be here for Ernie's show I'm and sorry. make sure he got started and everything was cool. But, you know, that's kind of on track now. So the last two days, I've slept in until about noon, and uh, it's been nice. Hey, the crack of noon is a good time to get up. Yeah. Well, one thing that we end up doing a lot. That we walk to, the beat. We walk the beat. That's right? what we call it. Just, just walking around yeah, the camp. Yeah, just what, just so, keep, keep walking around and just bouncing from place to place, seeing who's that's, there. Yeah, that's you know, the most fun. People, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, and I've it's, met so it's many working people. because we meet people to have on the show, right, or to do work projects with, or we mm-hmm. film and take pictures. We're just, all we have to do is just walk around, have a good time, visit vendors, buy stuff, well, and then and there we only, go. Not only just that, but I mean, for me, I have, I've friends so many people on Facebook, and I've been living here for six months, so I already know a hell of a lot of people that live in the community as it is, and there's, their tents are all spread out, so you know, I'm walking around, I see someone I know, but I, for Agora Valley, I literally spent like two hours just like trying to get from one end to the other, just keep meeting people. <laughs> I met like 50 people in like a two-hour yeah. uh, two period. Yep. It was... It was it was such a, a, a trip and an amazing process, like Isn't it hugging, all? shaking hands. It's awesome. It was amazing. Isn't it kind of crazy that I know about half the people here? Just walk yeah, around. I recognize like, oh, yeah, no. yeah, about, I know about so half people. the people here. Not a, a lot of them are from around the free state, and a lot of them are people I know from outside the free state. Who are just or some people I've never met before, pork fest, but I, oh, yeah, I know that. Well, you're one of my 2,700 friends on Facebook, right? I don't think by the end of Porkfest you'll know half the people here. At least that's not been my experience. Most of the people I don't know at Porkfest, there's a lot of new people here every year. Well, it's been the first, the first half of I mean, so far up till today, it's the, the 50% rule is held true. Maybe uh-huh. in the last couple of days there's going to be an influx of people I don't even know. And I don't even Facebook know. Anything like that. 
Well, I have to say though, like Pork Fest is such a great tool to get people to sign and see what it's like. Like mm-hmm. I've had multiple conversations with people that this is their first Pork Fest, but they they don't live in the state. I'm like this. This is what it's like living yeah. in the community. Can I say like the controversial, the, the, the controversial statement? Of course I can, because it's on yeah, show. Go damn ahead. it, lay it oh. down. I, I wasn't. I'm not super, super impressed by Pork Fest. Now I have to qualify that. Just be saying, you know, I moved. I when I when Cynthia Chase put out her big, we have to limit the freedoms of the free staters so they get get the hell out free of here. Free staters thing. are the single greatest threat to yes. the state. When that happens, I'm just like, fuck this. I got to move now. And so I just packed my bags, you know, I threw all my earthly belongings in the back of my two-door Honda Civic and just drew the 50 hours out from Phoenix. And then I had never been in New England at all before then. Mm-hmm. And I just landed, I've just been living the dream since then. So for someone who's been there for over half a year, you know, coming up on a year pretty soon, it's, this is what I've been living already. I mean, it, it is great and it's yeah. amazing and I, I'm going to come here every year. It's just that for me, it's not that impressive compared to day-to-day life, which is even more impressive because I get to go out and tell people, hey, dude, 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 you see this whole thing? that you're, It's like this all year round. Oh, you I, you, you got to move, yo. That's like what I get to just go around and tell people that the Pork like, Fest experience is the free state experience. Like the whole Bitcoin with all the v- different vendors. If there's someone behind me, I always immediately, if, especially if I don't recognize them, I introduce myself, say who I am, and blah, blah, you know, the, the meet and greet stuff. And then right before I'm buying, I'm like, have you ever seen a Bitcoin transaction in person? <laughs> yeah, you were and, telling me that. Yeah. And it's like, like, so come I here, that, little one. And like, they all like, oh my God. And I always use that as a pitch. I'm like, that's what it's like here. Everyone uh. has a Bitcoin <laughs> wallet. You can go around Manchester and like, you know, Everyone has it. You can use it. I use it for food all the time. It's, yeah, it's like the it's like what happens in New Hampshire, but concentrated, right? Like you yeah, take the 1,500 little, people and yeah. bring them all to Again, the same Again, we're talking around. about coffee stuff. It's like shots, right? Yeah. It's, it's free state shots. We're just yeah. taking shots all week long instead of like the more distilled down and like a whole pint of something. It's just shots. You know, and, and as far as coming into it like you did and, and all three of us did where we'd all moved – then went to Pork Fest. Yeah. A lot of the people here have not moved and they're checking out New Hampshire. So for them coming into this must be much more of like a shock because like you said, we've been That's living good. this and then it's like, oh, here's all my friends at the same campground. Whereas here it's people who are coming from areas where it's five to ten libertarians that maybe get together once a month or whatever coming into something like this. It's got to be overwhelming for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like there's a... A couple of high schoolers from Arizona that we know via the Facebooks. Actually, no, I met I met Amy via Instagram. All right, well, I, I met people in this community. I met Mason, There's also Anna as well. Like, I met Mason via Facebook. No, yeah, well, him I did meet f- via Facebook. Yeah, so, I met multiple different people here via Instagram, which is kind of weird too. There was the pair, the pair of them, you know, high school kids from Arizona that just like, oh, I love all this stuff, and I just, you know, they they come out here and they were just like. Whoa, going all around, yeah. big wide eyed. They came, they came to my alternative education talk, and at the end of it, they're like, "You know what? After hearing you talk, I don't think I want to go to college." And so nice. they're like giving them advice. I'm like, "Don't just drop out. Drop out with a plan." And I was telling them about what you got to do here, here. Talk about agorism, all this kind of stuff. And they were just like, you know. And I, I mean, I, I used to. Th- I thought I was young, and then there's these little like <laughs> bright eyed young people looking mm-hmm. up to me, like, "Wow, he's so big and mature, and he knows what's going on." And it's like, "Well, you're mature." <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about a perception. Mm, that's a false perception at best. <laughs> it, that's a false perception at best. I don't even know what that means, but I, I don't just don't know it. what that means either. Yeah, so that's the other thing. Um, youth activism. All right. I know to a certain extent it, it's easy with the whole university thing. But one other thing I've been doing a lot, I'm close with the Arizona. Uh, Arizona State State University Students for Liberty group. Mm-hmm. And so I used to, be, to hang out with them a lot, and then they gave me my, my big send-off party before I moved out. And so I keep on talking with them. Yeah, you did like a com- yeah. Skype conversation. And then right I did there, a right? Skype call, a, a presentation. Again, these were a lot of new people I'd never met before. These weren't just my friends back in Arizona. This time it was the whole group. A new class. New about, group. Yeah, I did a half-hour Skype-in presentation about the free state. Mm-hmm. And I need to start doing more of that. And I, I personally think all of us should uh, should be going to universities all in the, the the front lines, the border around in Vermont, in Maine, in Massachusetts. You should do that. Yes, <laughs> I, and I will. Okay. But I, I'm just one That's man. I can't do everything. I mean, how how much like Garrett over there? He's pretty recognizable. He's a cool guy. 
He's, he's, he's popular with the kids. He would totally work at a, at a university event like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like show up and then it's like everyone rec- remembers. It's like, yeah, that guy with like a three foot hair radius came in to talk about why you should move to New Hampshire. And they're going to remember that. And yeah, I'll why, go. Why would you want to go to like a, to like Massachusetts or Vermont or Maine? Why, to why save those? souls. Well, because I don't have to drive or fly all the fucking way across the country. <laughs> That's why. It's right there. They have no excuse. It's not like, well, but my whole life uprooted. It's like, it's there. Drive on a weekend. You can visit us, you know? Mm-hmm. See what it's all about. Well, if somebody books me, I'll go. Like uh, Garrett's mom actually is a teacher at a high school in New Hampshire, um, up in the Concord area, and she booked myself and Mark Warden and Garrett, and three of us went and we spoke to like three or four high school classes all in their auditorium, which was was great. No. Yeah, the change, but, the but change. hold on a sec. The thing with that is, you can talk to them about liberty, but they're already here. Like, I want to go talk to people who aren't here. Yeah, no, I agree with yeah. you. Like I said, if somebody wants to book me for something like that, I would consider. So, if I it. book you for something like that, would you show up if? You, Time if it's not too far away, I don't want to travel too much. Yeah. Was well, it like is Boston too far away? I don't like Boston. I try to stay out of the. I try to stay out I, of Boston. Do I? I I love Boston. It's like the front lines. It's just you go there. It's like fighting on the gates of mortar itself. Yeah, I'm done fighting. I'd rather just chill out in Keene. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. But hey, Vermont is like right there. Sure. So, so Mike, let's change this up a, a bit. All right, we're here. You've been here a lot longer than in, in one of us. So we're still, we're, still, we're still the new kids on the block, I guess you can say. You know? I didn't like that band. Neither did I. <laughs> uh, but at any, at any rate, where, where do you see this going? Because we came in now where there's, you know, there's mass, uh, critical mass. There's not, maybe not critical mass, but there's a hell of a in lot. In Manchester, of, there's critical mass. There's a hell of a lot of people that are free staters that are here. Where do you see this going, and how fast do you think it will go? Where, where, where do you project this in your mind? Man, I don't know what to expect. I just want to get to 20,000 people and then uh, watch and see what happens because that's really exciting considering all the things you're talking about, the critical mass, the uh, state rep saying that free staters are the single greatest threat to New Hampshire. That's happened with less than 10% of the ultimate goal of movers. So hopefully we can get to 20,000 sooner rather than later and trigger the move get people here and then you know then it will be easier to find people to step up and you know come to Rich Paul's uh, Supreme Court hearing and and yeah. do more and uh, and be more effective and and have more numbers on the ground I, I don't have a realistic timetable I know that I I had hoped when I moved here that things would go faster than they did cuz I just thought oh I'm going to get together with all these activists and we're going to you know have this impact and we have oh, there's no sure, doubt sure. about it um, people are very, very interested in what we're doing here, and they're watching with interest for sure. It's just it's taken longer than I expected. So yeah, success you know, looks different than you might have imagined. Yeah. And so I'm I'm in this for the long haul. Well, so am I. And I expect it's going to be a long haul. Well, I don't know. Hey, uh, but it could go quickly, no, right? Like the, it, the Berlin Wall session. Anyone? The Berlin Wall came down quickly. The uh, the you know the Russian breakup or the Soviet Union breakup that happened unexpectedly. Quickly, so you know it could be. Yeah, the, the Dogecoin revolution that just came on us like nobody's business. I mean, it could just right. be that free staters start sweeping into office in two years, and then major changes happen within five years from there. Yeah, I, I don't it, know. It could, it could go really quickly, and on top of that, all the activism that goes on here, we're inspiring the locals as well. Right, oh, yeah. the locals get involved; they see what's going on. But even that's then, key, though, to, to inspire the locals. There needs to be more um, outreach to uh, locals because a lot of us we always. Uh, we're really concentrating on getting people to move here. But mm-hmm. You should be, go do that. I should, but I don't really feel like that's my role. Like, I think well, every, you are doing that with the new Foundation for New Hampshire Independence. That is very oh, yeah. true, but I'm filming. You're doing it with jury outreach as well. Yes, that is very true as well, but a lot of times we're documenting that because we, we don't want to say that this is going on, come help us. It's also we're trying to reach out to other people, inspire them to move and come here to do the exact same no, thing. No, that's great, and I'm glad you're doing that. That's a, that's a level to jury outreach that I haven't done you know, regularly at all. Just kind of let it be whenever there's news people that want to report on it, they'll report on it. So it's great that you're putting the pictures out that you have been about what you guys have yeah. been doing there. Well, that's the thing. Like, 
the whole July 4th thing, it's not so much about putting it on, on a show for the locals. It's about putting it on a show for the world. I want it's, – it's not – it's for the – we're doing it for the photo op. You know what I'm saying? We're doing it so we have fo- footage – of all across the state, mm-hmm. this thing happening, we make it look huge. Even if it's just a few of us, we want to make it look like it's just this huge, unstoppable yeah. movement. The world sees this. People are like, wow, it's happening in New Hampshire. I got to be there right now. Mm-hmm. And then if, they come out, and then we win. If it's not recorded, did it happen? You know, most exactly. people, they, there's no record if of it. If an activist you know, cop something. locks in the forest and there's no one to hear him, did it really, did it really cop lock? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like the idea of getting a record, but it's it's unrealistic for me, at least, to go out and do Don't Take a Plea Deal Outreach, which is a regular oh, yeah, thing yeah. we do in, in Keene, and, you know, I'm usually out there alone uh, when I do that, and I don't, you know, I don't have the don't ability to... Don't you have, like, to, a whole kingdom under your thumb? There? I don't have the ability like, to... can't you just say, surf, come film me? <laughs> no, see, unfortunately, I'm not actually in charge, um, but... Uh, we, should no, change, I mean, we should change that. Let's all elect you... King well, of Keen. Well, you are and running then... for governor. <laughs> hey, you're running you for governor. You are running for governor. So it's, it's true. Hey, Governor how, Freeman. How, how is it how, going how, for you? Let me just say, how crazy would that be? If you actually got elected? I wouldn't possibly. I don't think I would be able to make it into office because I couldn't swear the oath. Yeah, wouldn't that be awesome? You get elected, <laughs> and then you're like, nope, can't don't do it. I won't swear. Bye-bye, right. bye, guys. It's I, been fun. I can't affirm it either. I'm not going to say I swear or affirm to th- allegiance to the state. I mean, the, the oath actually says that you're swearing allegiance to both the United States and the state of New Hampshire, and I don't want to do either of those things. So unless they would accept an oath to liberty, uh, there's no way I'm going to get in. I would imagine well, what that Supreme can, Court case would look like. Yeah. Can you promise me something? If you ever get to the point where you're – where they, you get elected and you're about to <laughs> swear the oath and you say, I'm not going to do it, can you drop the mic? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bam. Right there. Just lay it down. Get all the way up and just walk away. <laughs> yeah, just like, nope. Psych. I don't think I could do that. That's bad mic, mic technique. Yeah, but that's hey. That's something Mark Edge would do. That is <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, is it okay if I refer to you on the show as a bitch ass motherfucker? <laughs> you I hear can do whatever I, you want. It's your I heard, show. <laughs> I hear that's. I hear that's kind of. We rest him really hard. Did we you? Him to Gora Valley and like like just, the first day was Sunday. Yeah, I think, the first thing we, we just, say is bring that up to him. Yeah. Did he, he blush? Very, yeah, he blushed. He literally <laughs> bears. He's like, yeah, I heard you know this person heard it, that person heard it. Mm-hmm. We all heard it. We all and heard. I'll it. make There's my confessional with ringtones of it. All right, <laughs> my confessional. <laughs> Is that I had never watched any or listened to any free talk live. I was just not into podcasts. I was Great, I love just that. Whatever. I love it when people come here and they don't know about free talk yes. live, which is kind of a weird thing to say. But anyway, I have watched twenty minutes of free talk live. It was the leading up to and including of that incident. Hmm. So that was good radio. You know oh, what I'm saying? It's <laughs> in. We need more people calling me bitch ass motherfuckers so they get on your show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you guys ever had a blow up like that? Uh, we were thinking. No. We were thinking about staging one or having some sort of sex yeah. scandal where Go we saw some like we just we have a huge fight on air and one of us like storms out or whatnot. We actually yeah. did that once on well, Free Talk Live a long you, time you ago. Staged it. A staged. Uh, yeah. Did anyone buy was, it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I think so. Oh, so this last one wasn't it was a staged. It was an actual staged fight between Todd and the rest <laughs> of us. Something like that. Well, uh, I don't know if you... Uh, the raw video, again, I promise we're going to be good. We're going to categorize it. We're going to put it somewhere people can find it. But of the Friday uh, cop blocking, the UI checkpoint thing, where mm-hmm. a wild ant com appeared. A yeah, wild oh. ant com came out of the wilderness <laughs> of downtown Manchester. With his anarchist it, shirt. With his anarchist shirt. I'm filming uh, okay. the cop block, and all of a sudden I say, hey, nice shirt. And we start talking, and he, obviously he's he's full ancom. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, hey, I'm recording. I want uh, let's. I'm just letting you know I'm recording. We start debating. It's all oh, that's awesome, and uh, obviously with ancoms, it went straight to you know property rights. And it and, went straight you know, to property is theft, man. Yeah, the rent <laughs> rent is theft. <laughs> this is exactly how thing. this ancom was. And after. here's okay. the thing: I've deduced this after multiple ancom interactions. Uh, the speech is only half the language they speak. The rest is via interpretive dance because they <laughs> gyrate and stomp around and do gestures all over the place. And then and at, towards the end of this debate thing, it was, he was like, Rob was trying to disagree. He's like, well, I don't know. No, fuck you, man. And I thought, oh, wow. I thought there would be like a violent confrontation. But there was a Th- moment. Thankfully, the cops showed up. Yeah, thankfully, the cops showed up because there was a moment of solidarity. This Ancom was like, oh, shit, there's a fucking cop. 
we need to take care of this. So I'm filming that. He's like, there's more important things to do. <laughs> so, and he starts cop locking with me against the cops. Oh, so we sweet. had a real life moment of solidarity with an ant com and an ant cap yeah, although that, on the streets of Manchester. Although that it was guy, beautiful. He almost got my ass kicked because by the cop. Yeah, because no, the, the, cop, the cop was trying to the cop was trying to arrest me for walking into the crosswalk. Again, the goose what? during the walk sale because they were seething, watching us yeah. divert all these cars away oh, from their checkpoint. Yeah. And then during a stop sign, right, it was the crosswalk signal. Uh, I so I went over to hand a cop block a pamphlet into a, a car of a, some young lady who was like, "I want to know more. What about you guys are doing?" So mm-hmm. I went as soon as I saw it, they just converged, just swooped in, and wow. they said. And of course, since it was all on film, they eventually backed off because it was obvious I w- it would never hold up in court, right? Well, and they spent like five but, minutes, like on the radio, asking, "What do we do?" And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm film <laughs> asking, so, like, "Do you need? Do you need call the lawyer?" Yeah, exactly. Do you need someone to tell you to arrest this person for stepping on a street. Like, and what so are you doing? There's a bunch of free staters around filming, you know, talking to him and stuff. And then the ANCOM is just doing his, the dance of his people in the background. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the fuck, the state, man, the state. Dude, there's a corporate profits, man. It's not about the justice; it's with profits, man. And you just keeps on laying it down and he starts swearing and the cops are getting edgy and saying sir what we're going to ask you to do here right now sir is we're going to ask you to not swear he's going to swear against the law man fuck you and then they're like no disorderly kind of like I was really close to being like yo yo shut up because we're about a second away from the cops just whipping out the nice sticks and just start whacking everyone you know you think so it, it got kind of tense for he a little got, bit. He got a little animated. He did bring it down a notch. He went. He, he went. He wasn't that kind of cop. Like never I go full and calm. Uh, someone do. Yeah, I mean, I know Manchester and. police are supposedly more prone to violence than I've been some pushed by man, some other yeah. cops. But I mean, are they likely to actually pull out a nightstick with multiple people recording them? No, I don't. Probably see that. not. I just I'm I'm playing up for dramatics. Gotcha. I'm, trying, I'm trying to pretend. I, I mean, I don't know. I know they have beaten a guy to death there. So really? maybe they didn't they or no? They just beat him like within a half inch of his life. Yeah, I've not heard of that. No, they it was did a couple bring, years ago. It's a raw deal. Yeah, that, that it is. They actually did bring out a bear cat like the other day to, for some. Sh- uh, There's some shooting. Something. Yeah, it was kind of. They love. Got to love that. Love, yeah, I heard. I, would, I wish now, I had my camera and saw that. Would have been videotaped it. I heard rumors that when they first got their bear cat, they were like taking it out to donkeys and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and again, at what a thousand dollars an hour that it costs to operate that, that thing. Would be a that, priceless that, picture. That would, no, not just just would. film them. Just make a whole field day out of it and then just just like have a big bag of monopoly money again not frns like actual monopoly money mm. and just be like throwing it out behind the bear cat as they're going to like show the make a demonstration to the world that this is what they're doing they're just throwing money out with their their coffee their donut joy ride <laughs> like how much expensive is that uh, one trip to dunkin donuts mm-hmm. with the bear cat yeah well that's that's the thing we uh, another thing i would like to eventually do is uh do you know anyone in the community who plays accordion no but i'm not connected with the music okay because we have to find someone because i really believe we should start playing uh, pirate music around the police pirate station music yeah bum, bum, ba, na, da, na, 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 like good okay. old jolly pirate music <laughs> around outside the police station around police activity anywhere just that's pretty uh, funny Outside the Dunkin' Donuts when they're there, just just follow them around with like whole pirate. Being, yeah, full cosplay. Well, full yeah, or, or full cop. Let, let's be honest, the cop lock uniform looks like pirates anyway. With uh, Pete and the demo, <laughs> they just look like pirates. With their big chest hair and their like bandanas. With the, with the beard. Yeah, yeah, they just beard. they're on full pirates. So just <laughs> go around like that. Just give them an accordion and tell them to go R. And then there we go. We got a so demonstration. So you, you want Pete Air cop locking with an accordion? Yes. Well, I love. I'll go on record theater. saying that. <laughs> yes. I, I think that the movement needs more street theater. It was one of the things that attracted me here uh, when uh, Russell Canning and Cat Canning. Uh, Russell got this full on like Guantanamo Bay style orange jumpsuit with Ooh. a black bag, and he stood out on the side of the road in Keene and was like holding a sign about torture. And that's one example. There have been some other examples of uh, some really, I think, entertaining and poignant street theater that hasn't really happened so much. There was the one that happened uh, with Andre Rosa and Jason Robertson in Concord where they went up and they gave speeches, one from Demolition Man and the other from yeah, I, I forget I where. I actually just saw that uh, the other day. I never knew that. I, I see Andre all the time, and I never knew that he actually did that. I had never, I had not known. And, uh, it's Andrew hilarious. showed me on YouTube. I'm like, that's we didn't even know it was Andre. We were just watching it. And then at the very end, we like we know that voice, and it, he turned like he turns to walk away. And we see him, and we're like, that was that was Andre. Like he did that. We didn't even know. Like, yeah, whatever it is, I'm game. 
And let me put it this way. So I work down in Bedford and a, a couple different places I've seen where the police hide behind a bush or something mm-hmm. like that. They're just, you know, in there. And I don't know if you've seen the Bedford PD cars, but they're sleek and black and they do not look like police cruisers. Mm. And so they prey on people. And one thing I'd love to do is to start, uh, again, I probably get Pete on board with this too, start a metal band called Speed Trap, right? <laughs> and just have signs for Speed Trap. Like, yeah, come to our show, man, right in front of the cop. And so if they try to... Get get upset with us or whatever. It's like no, we're just, just promoting band. band. And we just give them band <laughs> flyers, but we're just really stopping the cars from you know from get falling prey to the speed trap. Again, yeah. you should do it. Yeah, it, it'll be a thing. But well, we need to get eventually. Some, I, I am definitely down for the street theater. That's why uh, we got Andrew in the mix now. He's he is going to be the go to coordinator. You better be the go to coordinator for any kind of street theater. I wish I could just like quit all my jobs and do this, but we're working towards that. You've already done that. but Yeah, and, and the more time that people are here, the more established they're going to become and the more you know, time they're going to have to do activism, I think. If I can quit my job and just do this, I would. Yeah. But I can't. i got to pay the bills. Someone has to pay the rent for that studio. Someone has to feed Ash. Yeah, Which, I by know. the way, Ash isn't this here. is the first oh. episode of the Rebel Love Show without our producer. Yeah, our, Ash cannot be in the building. Is Usually, that like a cat or something? Yes, yeah, Ash, Ash, Ash is our studio Ash, cat. Ash the studio cat. Checks the cables, make sure everything's going wrong. Mm-hmm. So we blame her when she knocks out the sound or whatever. Well, she'll get a, but, she'll get a good spanking when I. Get oh yeah, on. she likes that. That's kind of weird. Anyway, <laughs> she also <laughs> <laughs> spiked her on air. It's kind of it's it's a little interesting. It's, it's part uh, of her little. Well, first off, you can't have a if you're going to have an anarchist uh, show or anything like that, you have to have a cat. Yeah, it, it's like anarchy one hundred and one. Okay, mm-hmm. let me let me. I was thinking of this earlier. This is a good time as any. We're go, we're going down the list of whether or not you qualify in as a proper libertarian porcupine, right? Because there seems to be a list of <laughs> things that everyone sort of falls into. Because, okay. hey, as much as we say we hate collectivism, we do sort of fall into collective habits and groups. For one thing, do you do the paleo diet? No. Ooh, well, this is not looking good. Do you own a cat? At this time, I don't, but I have in the past. Okay, we'll say that the, a yes. That, that's okay. Um, are you poly? I like the idea of poly. It's just never really worked out. <laughs> Ooh, we're not, <laughs> tried we're not looking good. Have you tried poly? Yes, yes. Well, have you previous... tried it? That, that, that's, there we go. That's good there. enough. Previous okay. relationships. Now, do you um, do you like the TV show Firefly? It was fine. You're not a worshiper of Firefly. No. We, no. Someone calls you. I was in a heresy here. Okay. Uh, well, bulletproof coffee. Do you like bulletproof coffee? I, it, like I said, I've, I, I'm fine with coffee, but I don't what? seek it out. Okay. This is not, so not like, going to fly I'm at all. I'm losing on this you're one. losing no. all your streak. No, but in, in seriousness, this is, I don't know if you've noticed the same thing. This tends to be these no, things. No, I haven't. Well, maybe yeah. it's a Manchester thing. Maybe it's a Manchester thing. thing. Yeah, it's a, it could all be those a things are huge thing. there in that, in, in yeah, that group. Yeah, and you get it's to the point where you get shit if you're not doing any of those things. It's like, but, you're making a latte. Well, you do smoke, so that's one. That's, that's your big thing, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Smoke, we, we, that's another thing. Yes. The uh, ganja, and I ha- it never I worked, it never worked for me. Let's just say it. It's different for everybody. Well, I know. Yeah, and that's what Rich Paul told me, too. And, you know, Weed Santa. I mean, if Weed mm-hmm. Santa does you should know his shit by then. And by the way, as we were talking earlier, um, Rich isn't with us today because he is taking a vacation at the Spe- Keen Spiritual Retreat Center. That's right, and uh, for an indeterminate period of time. It's so he is in the slammer, and that's not cool. Right here on the table, we have the Rich Paul Defense Fund. I would highly encourage everyone with money. Is there a we, Bitcoin uh, setup for that? Talk to Derek J. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I believe there I, is. We, we're rooming with them. I think we can. Figure something out. So, donate to the Rich Paul Legal oh, Defense there Fund. You go. Also, visit the guy. You yes, know, I don't live in Keene, but I'll make trips up there to like visit him <sighs> just, in person. Come, whoa, 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 you just silver. Said, Liberty it's Phoenix right just dropped some silver in there. That is amazing. That's yeah. fantastic. Clap, 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 clap. Here, you can Let's get a little clap track going. Woo! All you right. can visit Rich Paul actually online. So even if you're not in New Hampshire yet, you can visit him for five bucks. And if that sounds expensive, it's not. If you're going to drive to see him, it would be a lot more than five bucks, even if you live in most parts of New Hampshire. So, unless you have other business in Keene, and anytime I have right. other business in Keene, or I just need to get out of Manch Vegas because sometimes you gotta, hmm. I definitely go and I definitely go and visit him. Uh, Graham Colson again, Graham, another wonderful guy. You can actually schedule two visits right in a row. Exactly, as well. yeah. he's going to be uh, taking a vacation with Rich, and I don't know anything about a defense fund for him or anything, but I do well, know. He, you know, it gets lonely in there. You're out away from all your friends. You're 
in mm. confinement and it helps to see a friendly face and you know if you don't why would you visit someone at their house but you wouldn't visit them at their new house you know what i'm saying sure. at their new You're, their place home of away from home yeah. <laughs> I would not want to call a jail home for anyone, <laughs> but I get what you're it saying. It was for me for yeah. two months. Well, yeah, and I hope you got lots of visits. Um, you know, I got a few. I got a, again. David Crawford was really great at coming, and uh, he's in this room. Thank you, David. Um, again, yeah, other people came by when they could. I don't have any expectation of it though. Like, if I'm going into jail, I know people are busy. I know that you know the person in jail is not the first person on their mind people are taking care of themselves and i just appreciate any anybody that shows up or any letter that uh, that is sent so you can write to rich paul at mailtojail.com and you can visit him at securistech.net slash video visitation online and that's also where you can go is that same website to schedule a real life visit i actually wrote rich paul when he was uh, in jail before i moved you're more hard and he actually than me. responded back to me i never told him that in person though i don't know oh, really? so that one of the pe- i'm sure he got a bunch of mail but well, i guess what you're going to tell we're going to tell him that. that we're going to tell him that when we visit him that's for sure yeah no for sure we yeah it was cool I, I got mail from people that uh, you know they said that i had inspired them to move to new hampshire there was even one uh, family that moved to New Hampshire while I was in jail, and they were kind of writing me about that and their experience. It was really neat. Well, and I'll say one of my earliest activists of any kind type of stuff was when I was in my very early teens, like 13, 14. I was writing, I would write, I did write to prisoners, like people that actually committed violent crimes and things, but who had, uh, were turning their life around. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, part of a religious thing, a church group, but they, they had, uh, you know, I guess renounced violence and embraced peace and I was writing to them encouragement letters during that time and I also wrote to again fruitless fruitlessly I'm sure but to ambassadors and heads of state etc yeah. about various <laughs> uh, re- religious prisoners who'd been thrown in jail for their beliefs and their their free conscience hmm. so I used to do that a whole lot when I was little I used to just like spend a little well, young teen right well, a little bit of time is uh, is all you have to spend to write to Rich Paul. Mail to jail dot com. Yeah, uh, it's Jay Freeville who's behind that, and he does an amazing job of you know doing all the work. Basically, you just go type out your message. He prints it. He stuffs the envelope. He stamps it. He addresses it, and he oh, sends wow. it. Wow! So, so I mean, all, all no there's no now. excuse. Because my excuse before was going to be her- horrible handwriting. Mm-hmm. But if he'll do that, if I can ask him to like handwrite it out in horrible scrawl because <laughs> that and you had to pay a uh, tip on the big yeah you have to, to give them extra and yeah. i do actually Where, i've given bitcoin a number of times to uh mail to jail but there's Where is boner joe by the way he unfortunately has uh been having some uh physical health difficulties that's very oh. unfortunate i'm sorry i heard he shaved his beard too that might be the source of said difficulties mm, like samson kind of yes here. exactly yeah. or like pete air who would not be the man he is today no, he can without his soul his, beard. his i mean beard whatever same thing <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're running on the, the clock here. So, Ian, as uh, go ahead and pimp everything you're doing here. Yeah, you know, again, you, this is the time. Like I get, everywhere. You don't need to pimp anything because I, everyone already knows. But, hey, here you go. Mike's yours. Well, a lot of people know about Free Talk Live, LRN.FM, and FreeKeen.com. Those are probably the three biggest yeah, websites. Let me just say I've about FreeKeen. Bo- Rob and I blog a lot for FreeKeen. I appreciate it. You all can do it, too. Like, it's not... Well, not blog for that site, but blog in general. But you know what I'm saying? Like, freaking always can take more writers, too, right? Am I right? It could, yeah. I mean, we want to have the doers, you know, the people who are out there getting it done. It doesn't take very much ever, guys. Just go out and write something about something cool. Or start your own blog. I mean, please, it doesn't all have to be at freaking. It's just there needs to be other outlets, in my opinion. Hey, how about this? If you're Manch-centric, write for the Rebel Love Show. We have a freaking style blog part on on rebelloveshow.com, and... Everything we get do on that, yeah. Activism we put up on that channel. Uh, on almost that every freaking well. thing we write for you also ends up on the Rebel We Love syndicate site. it. Excellent. Syndicated yeah. content. You know, no one's getting paid, so. So um, the other thing, of course, is Keenvention, which uh, if you're here, here at Porkfest, uh, there should have been an advertisement in the guide for Keenvention, which is going to be in its second year this year, October 31st through November 2nd. It'll be a weekend of fun and keen, which would include possible activism, although last time we wanted people to go Robin Hooding in Keen, but the city of Keen pulled their parking enforcers off the streets during the two, uh, the Friday and Saturday, so there was actually no possibility of Robin Hooding because we shut it down entirely. <laughs> They're scared. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, they scared. literally thought there would be 300 activists in the streets in downtown Keene. <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty amazing. It's like, ah, they're all there. And they all have three 
be feet. And I'm not speculating. Theater. They actually wrote oh. about it in a, in a court filing that they were expecting hundreds of activists in town. So wow. Keenvention, um, you know, you might get to do some cop blocking or some activism. But the the re, you know, you check out the area if you've never been to Keen before, and it focuses on activism. This event, Pork Fest, Liberty Forum, is great events. Please come to these events. But uh, one of the things that I thought that these events were missing was a real zeroed in focus on activism and the activists in New Hampshire and what they're doing. Because you can go to and see Jeffrey Tucker and, you know, Stefan Molyneux and uh, Nick Gillespie is going to be here. Yeah. And it, the, the DIY stuff here at Porkfest is great. You can learn stuff. But uh, Keenvention is all about the activism. It's all about what's happening statewide with people representing different areas coming in, representing different activism styles. Are we and on the speaker list? You should be. You, should, well, you totally should. Yeah. Hey, can, can I make a commitment now? To, to speak at the <laughs> event? Speak. Yeah. Um, well, there's going to be a media panel. The thing is, I try to organize this in as decentralized a manner as possible. Spontaneous so, order, guys. So I pick the um, – I, I approach people to uh, host a panel, and then I tell that person, look, you decide what the panel's focus is going to be. I mean, I, we, I start them with a general topic, like, mm -hmm. you know, direct action. Uh, but they pick the, the thrust of the panel, the questions. They pick the panelists as well. I don't want to have anything to, to do with that. Yeah, good so. for you because you do too much already. Like, yeah. There needs to be more people picking up the slack. Right, and I don't want to micromanage people. I don't want to tell my panelists who are really – they're coming there for a $20 gas stipend or a VIP dinner. I mean this yeah. is not a big uh, amount of money that they're getting well, out none of this. Of, none of us do this for the money. We do this right. for the passion and the love because we want to be free. But I want to cover somebody's gas well, if they're going to come out of to Of course, keep. yes. So, um, so yeah, focusing in on activism and uh, and it's an intimate event too, which you know I didn't know what to expect the first year. I didn't know how many people were going to come and I was pleased that there were over 100 people there. Now about half of those people were there comped as guest uh -huh. speakers. The rest of them were, were paying customers and uh, it, it created this uh, really intimate atmosphere at Porkfest you don't get to meet everybody it's not possible yeah. but at Keenvention everybody's in the same room you know there's no other things to do except going outside the hotel and going robin hooding or something yeah. so everybody's there and they're either in that room or they're kind of out in the hotel lobby and and you get to meet everybody and it, and it creates a different atmosphere which I really like well I definitely plan on being there for this uh, Keenvention obviously cool. So, but uh, it's forty bucks if you buy the tickets before the end of Pork Fest. There you go. <laughs> all right, uh, but you can catch all of our content at RebelLoveShow.com. We're on Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook. We're pretty much all over the place, and uh, we're out. So, peace. Peace be upon you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you.